Hello children. Good morning everyone. This is Priya, your English teacher from Alpha Group of Institutions. And welcome back to our grammar classes. And today we are going to discuss ACE grammar as you all know this book. So we are going to discuss ACE grammar. And in that, if you open page number 27, you can 26 and 27, you can see chapter 5 verbs. So open page number 26 in ACE grammar book children. Open. So if you open that, you can see chapter 5 verbs. So let us talk about verbs today. Okay. What are verbs children? Before reading that and let us read this before explaining about the verbs. Read these sentences. Anna gives, gave her mother a present yesterday. We are going on a trek tomorrow morning. And gave or going these words are in red color. Because we are going to talk about the verbs today. And we had changed the verb into red color. Because you can identify it easily. The words in the bold are verbs. It means these are verbs. We know that a verb shows an action or an event or a state. Children, you all know what is a verb. Verb is an action, right? Whatever we do in a daily life like jumping, sitting, doing, writing, reading, studying, singing, playing, everything comes under verbs. The work which we do by moving our body parts, our hands, legs, mouth, eyes, whatever we do, when we are moving a certain thing and the action will be happen. And when action does this and that action is called verb. Whatever the actions we are doing in our day to day life by moving our parts of the body that comes under verbs. So verb always shows an action or event or a state. Okay. Now we know that a verb shows an action, an event or a state. Main and auxiliary verbs. So what are the two types of verbs there? Main and auxiliary verbs. We use a main or principal verb to indicate the action of the subject. Battle loves horse riding. So children, there are two types of verbs, main and auxiliary verbs. The main verb is also called as principal verb. The main verb... The main verb is also called as what? Principal verb. Main verb and auxiliary verb are the important parts of the sentence. And both of them contribute to make a correct sentence. When they both contribute themselves with them, then only they can make a perfect sentence. Okay, a correct sentence. What is a main verb here? A verb is... The main verb is a verb that expresses an action. It gives a major information about the, like in terms of nature of the action. It gives a major information what? In terms of the nature of the action like running, uh, loving, uh, hating, eating, buying, helping, swimming, everything comes under Verb, main verb. Here also the example has given that the battle loves horse riding. Here the loves is the main verb because love is a nature of action. Okay. And now when we are going to talk about this auxiliary verb, we use an auxiliary or helping verb to indicate the tense of the main verb. B. Now let us uh, look here. There are two types of verbs, main verb and auxiliary verb. Main verb is also called as principal verb. Auxiliary verb is also called as helping verb. Main verb talks only about the specific action which we are going to express. But the auxiliary verb is a helping verb. It will not show the action what the person is doing, but it helps the main verb. For example, I am going. I am going. Going is an main verb. It is an action, nature of action. But if in some sentences, if you want to accompany, I will be going today. 
that b comes as b is an auxiliary verb so this auxiliary verb and the main verb going joins and give a correct sentence i going today it will not come no i will be going today so that b helping verb helps the auxiliary verb going this is how see what are the auxiliary verbs b form verbs are is or was where am all these are b form verbs and for do do does did and for have has have had will would shall should can could may might ought or auxiliary verbs all these are auxiliary verbs be these are the helping verbs which helps the nature of the main verb to support the sentence the main verb is you know the action verbs writing running reading sleeping and all these auxiliary verbs are the helping verbs we can use these auxiliary verbs in order to help the main verb yana has grown some plants on her balcony grown is a main verb has is an auxiliary verb yana has grown some plants on her balcony okay children so now i think you have understood what is the difference between the main verb and auxiliary verb okay children now listen main verbs have major meanings now let us talk about like the exercises first let us do the first exercise based on main or auxiliary verbs okay uh, now we have seen what are the main verbs and auxiliary verbs so based on main verbs and auxiliary verbs we have to do this a exercise a roman complete these sentences with suitable main or auxiliary verbs what are the main verbs children main verbs are like action words isn't it like run write read sit jump all those things auxiliary auxiliary verbs are what as we had seen the helping words is are was were all these are auxiliary verbs which we need to write now first one tell me dash you coming to the party so here coming is a main verb so when the main verb has already in the question we have to use a helping verb that is auxiliary verb tell me are you coming to the party second one they dash finish the job they have finished it is a main verb action verb finished ed when it is a past tense what you will use here they have the helping verb here we have to use is have they have finished the job now write the answer children h a v e have third one dash what dash you do every sunday so here a single a person is asking another person a conversation between two person right what do you do every sunday answer is d o do fourth one i dash like to watch tv there is a good film at 6 o'clock i dash means i would here you are expressing your possibility right i would like to watch tv there is a good film at 6 o'clock so for the second question answer is h a v e have for the third one d o do and for the fourth one the answer is would w o u l d so there are eight questions in this roman children the first four i have done for you and the remaining four you have to do it as today's homework now coming to the next transitive and intransitive verbs the other sort of verbs what are the other sort of verbs transitive and intransitive verbs we know that a sentence has a subject and a verb every sentence will have a subject and a verb sometimes the verb also has an object which receives the action of the verb there are two kinds of objects direct and indirect objects and something that is directly affected by the verb is the direct object what is the children something that is directly affected by the verb is the direct object the manager 
sign the contract manager is a subject signed is the verb what did they sign they signed the he signed the contract so this is a direct object the person who is indirectly affected by the action of a verb is an indirect object here manas gave the flowers to ekta manas is a subject gave is a verb and here this here this is what they gave the flowers again another indirect object is here to whom they gave is ekta so manas gave the flowers if nothing is there the flowers will become a direct object but here they have given another object so it becomes the ekta becomes an indirect object and in above sentence the flowers is the direct object this is the flowers is the direct object however some instances a verb can function without an object to verbs that take an object are called transitive verbs verbs that do not take objects are called intransitive verbs listen carefully children the verbs which takes an object an action which takes an object are called transitive verb and some actions which do not take the verb objects is called intransitive verbs and there are some verbs that can be used as both transitive and intransitive verbs here janet ate janet ate the jalebis janet ate what jalebis janet ate the jalebis here the verb is taking the direct object so when the verb the here the ate is a verb direct object is jalebi so subject verb object subject here is the verb here is the object and when the verb is taking the object directly it becomes transitive verb it becomes transitive because what he ate jalebi so direct contact is there look the same thing janet ate hungrily here janet ate hungrily this is also a verb this is also a verb uh, sorry it this is a verb and here there is no object janet ate janet is hungry he ate hungrily but what did he ate he didn't ate he they didn't mention any direct object here so here the verb this is a subject verb and no direct object is here so when the verb is not taking any object here it is a transitive verb now children when a verb is taking a object it is an indirect object even though when an object direct object even though when an object is here if they are and mentioning another object it will become an indirect object here only one thing is there when a verb takes the object it becomes transitive verb here when the verb is not taking the, any object in this sentence no objects mentioned so what happens it becomes a intransitive verb now did you understand the difference between the transitive verb and intransitive verb children yes there are some verbs that are always used as intransitive verbs and here are some such verbs we told that some verbs when some verbs are not taking any objects it will become intransitive but these words which are in this table they are always used as intransitive verbs whether they are they take they use an object whether they take an object or if they are not taking an object also these verbs are always used as intransitive verbs so whenever come explore lob sit rise excel respond run smile act quite continue when these type of verbs comes in a sentence definitely those are, those comes under uh, they will be used as intransitive verbs 
the fire bridge care the fire brigade continues to be a high alert continues to be a high alert here it is used continuous is followed by infinity to be with no direct object isn't so so here the continuous to be has come and did, did they give any the continuous to be did they mention any time or point here where it stopped they did not mention any point where it stopped so when it is in infinite mode continues to be what there is no object continuous to be till seven o'clock continues to be till the policeman they didn't give any object here so when there is no object and when it is Followed with an infinitive. Infinitive means there is a no end to a word. It becomes an intransitive verb. Rishi excelled at answering all the questions correctly. And here also no direct object. And excelled is followed by a preposition. So when a verb is followed by the preposition or an infinitive. And if there is no any direct object. It also becomes as it will be used as intransitive verb. Understood children? Now let us do the exercises. Now children, we have uh, to open page number 28 in your grammar book. And be ready with your pencils. When I ask you to tick the right answer, you have to tick along with me. Be Romanese, tick the correct answer. And circle the objects. Tick the correct answer. Circle the objects. Now children. Heat expands metals. Heat expands metals. The right answer is transitive. Metals expand on heating. So children. Here, expand, when as we spoke here, as we told that uh, some words when they are added along with a preposition, here look here, excelled is followed by a preposition. When it is followed, when a verb is followed with a preposition and no direct object, it will be become, it will be a transitive, intransitive verb. Here, metals expanding, expand on heating. There is no direct object here. And the verb here is, is followed with a preposition. When a verb is followed with a preposition with no direct object, it will become intransitive verb. So, metals expand on heating means what? The answer is intransitive. Next, the driver... Stopped the car. The driver is the subject. Stop is the verb. And then here they have given the what direct object. What did the driver stop? The car. So we are, here we found the right answer. The driver stopped the car. Isn't it? So subject, verb and direct object is also called. Immediately what will happen? This will be used as, say, the verb will be used as transitive verb. The car stopped abruptly. Here the object has come here. No subject. Car, sorry, car, car stopped. Sorry, no direct object here. The car stopped abruptly. Where did it stop? Where did it stop? Did they mention any particular point here? There is no direct object right here and the car stopped abruptly comes under what? Intransitive verb. Intransitive. So the second answer is transitive. Intransitive. Third answer is transitive. And the fourth answer is intransitive. And there are nearly 10 questions children. You have to simply tick the right answer whether it is a transitive or intransitive verb. So the first four we have finished now and the remaining six you have to do it as a homework. 
okay now underline the direct objects and circle the indirect objects in these sentences now listen carefully children you know what is a direct object and what is a indirect object if there is only one object followed with a verb it is a direct object or if they are giving more than one object it, the, the second object will become an indirect object okay francis teaches german to foreign students so look here francis teaches what what is he teaching german so we got the direct object here and they also given they also gave to whom he is teaching to foreign students so francis teaches what and to whom two objects were here the first object is a direct object and the second one is indirect object so first one we had underlined we have to underline the direct object and we have to circle the indirect object understood children now second one the crowd cheer the bowler the crowd cheer the bowler now what is the direct object here what is the direct object here children the crowd cheer the bowler crowd uh, can you mention the number of people how many are here in the crowd we cannot mention how many we don't know the exact or the indirect objects will always be like infinite direct object we can mention that and this particular specifically there is a man there is a boy there is one pencil there is one car a bus is going when we are mentioning a name particularly or specifically the number the quantity that will be the direct object and we when we are just talking about a sum of like an amount of when we are not particular about the number about the quantity that will become the indirect object look here francis teaches german so we know what is that subject we know perfectly to whom foreign students do you know how many students are there students means group of students but we don't know how many right then so that that is why it became an indirect student sorry indirect object here the crowd cheered the bowler crowd cheered the bowler bowler means one or many there it means we are talking about one bowler specifically we know the who is the bowler bowler is a single person particularly that we are talking specifically so it becomes a direct object so here you have to underline the bowler you have to underline the bowler because this is the direct object and crowd crowd means a number of people do you know how many people are there you don't know right you don't know how many people are there one or many you don't know crowd means a group of student people so when we are not sure about the group of people then it becomes what it becomes a indirect object the crowd comes under indirect object and the bowler comes under direct object so circle the crowd and underline the bowler okay we have to underline the direct object circle the indirect object so underline the direct object bowler and circle the indirect object crowd okay guys now coming to the third one the police are questioning the suspect the police are questioning whom the police are questioning whom suspect so we got the correct answer like the police are questioning whom means the answer is suspect so this will become a direct object who are questioning police did they mention a, like police man no just police police means how many whether it is a policeman we don't know or police women also we don't know whether a group of police also we don't know so when we are not exact with the word police it becomes indirect object so we have to circle indirect object police and underline the word 
that is direct object suspect okay now come to the fourth one the students elected mahira as the head girl the students elected mahira as the head girl so what is this the students selected whom mahira as what head girl so the direct object is continued with another object here two objects so the students become a subject here elected is a verb the students elected mahira the students selected whom mahira as what so these two objects are interlinked here they are teaching german to the foreign students so this one is used for this isn't it the same way mahira is interlinked with the head girl when we are we are not adding here some other objects some other words here when we are adding some other names or some other things it will not become an indirect object they are talking about mahira and mahira's position they are talking about a language to whom they are teaching so here head girl becomes a indirect object the students elected mahira so direct object elected whom direct object is mahira so underline mahira as what mahira became what now this object is becoming something we are not talking about the subject here right this here german is a direct object this is used as used for other students in the same way this one is used as a head girl so after we are talking about the object second time and the students selected mahira as the head girl means head girl becomes a indirect object so underline mahira as direct object and circle the head girl as indirect object okay children so there are eight questions in this c roman the first four we have finished and the remaining four you do it as the homework okay uh, so chala let us stop today's session with this because if we teach uh, another roman it become we can the for the next session we can't do like it will be only for 10 or 15 minutes so if we break this chapter with this slide itself like with see see roman then only we can have the second section section with the summarization of the previous thing so i don't want to drag this more and then i don't want make the second session concise so let us stop this session with this and continue in the next session thank you children and i want you to do the exercises perfectly whatever i am giving if you have any doubts feel free to call the school number and you can clarify your doubts by god's grace we have opened the school and doubts doubt clarification sessions are also open all the students are coming to school you guys also can come to school directly and clarify your doubts with the teachers directly we teachers are sitting there for for the whole day and we are ready to clarify your doubts do the exercises perfectly if you have any doubt uh, like uh, if you have uh, if you want to recheck the answers the key pdf will be sent along with this session in the group so you can cross check your answers in that page and then you can check the spellings okay thank you guys thank you for staying with me and this is priya signing off from alpha group of institutions bye